My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. This is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Today I'm honored to introduce Hank Swift Cloud LeBeau. Welcome, Hank. And Hank is a leader in our community. He's a father, a grandfather, um, a life historian of uh, the history of Native Americans in Silicon Valley here. Um, just so many titles and well respected. But more importantly of all, he's family. So that makes him really important to me. <laughs> Welcome, Hank. Uh, you have quite a history. Um, you came here on relocation, but you started out where? I started out in uh, a reservation uh, called the Shine River Sioux Indian Reservation in Central South Dakota. Born in 1941, which was, I was a post-World War II child growing up and then off the reservation, my mother moved in 1947 to the Black Hills Army Depot. So I was raised on federal ground, ground whether it was Indian or uh, Army. Mm -hmm. And while there, I, that's where I had my formal years in education, elementary and high school. And um, What was that experience like? It was uh, it was quite an experience. I uh, when I was a young kid, I guess I had short man's disease. I was five foot eight and a half, and <laughs> I always wanted to be six foot two like uh, my, my buddies. And um, but I learned to play sports well and uh, be quick and fast and uh, learn to do things like that. And so sports really helped me uh, in, in my young life uh, academically because it it, it kept me uh, straight in school and. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, I, uh, after graduation, I, I didn't make the Air Force, so I signed up for the relocation program at the time to come out to California, you know, go west, young man. And I think <laughs> I heard that cliche through the years. So I Did you have a choice of places to go? Yeah, I did. I wanted to go to Denver, of course, Chicago at first, but they weren't taking them as fast. The only place that was really taking them within a month was place called San Jose, California. Uh -huh. and I didn't know where this was. I heard of San Francisco and Los Angeles, but I didn't know where the heck San Jose was. Of course, San Jose at that time was only about 250,000 at the time. Mm -hmm. And it, since then, it has grown immensely. You know. uh, so okay, before you came out here, you played basketball? Yeah, I played basketball and I ran track and I, I played football. Of course, I don't have front teeth because of football. But you were active in sports. sports. I know we have some pictures of you that I want to show the audience. There's a couple here. One, you look like James Dean. And <laughs> this is from high school? Yeah, yeah, that's my graduation picture ah, in 1961. Very nice. I like the hairdo. That must have taken a lot of work. Yeah, it did. A lot of hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, uh, you look just like James Dean, or you look like you should be on an album cover. Uh, we, well, you know, we, we got a lot of influence from South Philadelphia with Dick Clark. And uh -huh. He used to show all these people like Frankie Avalon and Fabian and Bobby Rydell. So we always, <laughs> although we were Indian on the, on the little remote areas, we also wanted to stay up with time. So mm -hmm. we, we too wanted to be just like the average American. And, right. Um, 
So that's why those pictures are taken. Like <laughs> well, they're when pretty good. It, yeah, I go back and I have a big chuckle. I mean, it's been many years. <laughs> In fact, my high school reunion was um, last year, 50 years. Oh. And uh, I, I, I got a picture on uh, email from a couple of them, and I, I don't even recognize them anymore. Did you, you didn't go? No, I, I was probably one of the few that didn't. Out of the 22 of us, I graduated. Wow. Uh, they're they're all uh, most of them were all Caucasian. Of course, you know Caucasian guys. You know what they lose first is their their hair, and so most of half of them are all all bald headed. And I didn't recognize them. They all look alike. It looked like <laughs> I landed on the moon and seen a bunch of moon men up there with bald heads. But uh, and they're probably laughing at me too if they see my picture. But uh, it's kind of funny how we all changed. You know. And then you you picked San Jose. Yeah, I picked San Jose, and uh, I didn't know a soul in California. I come to California, of course. I read all about the the, the beaches and all the good stuff you want to hear about. So I picked San Jose, and um, and uh, it was quite an experience. I was very lonely, uh, very lo I didn't know a soul out here, but I seen a lot of brown-skinned people out here, you know. <laughs> and um, I used to go to the theaters here and you know where I come from one horse town South Dakota where you're just lucky to have a, a 15 seat theater there you know and, but out here we had the theaters like the Crest and the Jose and the Padre and the studio all these theaters on First Street. Well know? I guess San Jose was booming then right downtown yeah, they, had a, yeah. they had a downtown at the time? Yeah uh, Post Street uh, they had the downtown gym Babe Griffin you know and I was into boxing sports so I'd go down there on Saturday afternoons and watch them work out and it was, I, I was in seventh heaven, you know, mm -hmm. I was just, I never seen so much activity in my life. And the cruisers were going up and down first and second street <laughs> at night. And I was just so in awe and just sit there at, on the stop, uh, the bus bench and just watch them. Uh -huh. And it, it was quite fascinating to me coming from South Dakota and, and not exposed to that type so of So did life. you go through uh, job training? Did you get a job when you first came out or what did you do? Well, I, I, I signed up for direct employment, DE they called it, and where they tried to get you a job. Of course, a guy with no work experience is out of high school. So I, I got a job in Newark, California in a brick plant, and I worked as a laborer, and I, I learned to work real hard, and uh, uh, you know worked there for a period, and went on to other jobs there upon that, after that. So it was, but I was, was working in the labor field, whether it's construction or uh, different other industries, or civil industries I work for around around this area. Oh, okay. And then, how did you connect to other Native people? Um, to, well, unfortunately, through the Indian Bar. I mean, because that's where most all the relocatees uh, gravitated to mm -hmm. the uh, the different Indian bars that most of the relocatees um, uh, socially. Um, Felt they had a felt compelled that that's where they had to meet over a few suds, and unfortunately, it was kind of a a negative strain and element in my life that uh, thereupon I I had uh, some problems after that with with uh, the chemical alcohol and um, and you know we all have to go through through things in life and uh, with whether it's whatever it is, but I was feel the creator puts things in your life to learn from, you know, they, and certainly that, that chemical was put in my life to really see the ups and downs and the other side of life that I never knew. And of course, on the reservations, there was swarming with alcohol, mm -hmm. alcoholism, you know, but, and it affected me as well out here while, while um, being, being um, a participant in the program out here. So. I had a problem for a few years with uh, with booze and spiritually finding myself and uh, lifting myself up and uh, and try to enhance myself in some capacity by going to vocational school and mm -hmm. then going to um, higher education. The co local colleges, like everybody else, I guess, City College and then San Jose State. Mm -hmm. And then I did go to seminary in Vancouver School. Uh, later on in years at uh, seminary at the UBC, the University of British Columbia, and uh, I got a master's degree, and there after I was um, ordained as a priest, so I'm also 
uh, a priest, an ordained priest, and um, and I still work with helping um, uh, addict alcoholics as well, finding finding the spirit, trying to find their direction. And, and you're uh, a priest at St. Philip's Church. Yeah, they we say you know we celebrate. Um, I used to do it every weekend for the last nine years, and this year I told my wife Sherry that we. I'm going to cut down a little bit, cut it in half, and uh, um, and uh, do things a little more as a, um, go on sabbatical, I guess. Uh -huh. That seems to be an overused word, you know, so, so partial sabbatical for a while. And because, uh, you know, you get a little tired and uh -huh. it, it's it's quite, you know, there there's a little work and investment in doing that every weekend. You sure, know. sure. But, but I like... Um, uh, to, um, I'm an artist, I would say. Um, I, I, I like to draw pictures, and if you like the picture, uh, use it. Um, um, but uh, you have a choice in the matter, and I always felt like as human beings, we have choices. Right. Unfortunately, a lot of us made unhealthy choices, but we learn from those, you know. We learn, that's why we're doing the things we do now that we deem positive, so. Um, let's take a look at some more pictures that we have, and maybe you can tell me. This is you at a very young age. Yeah, my my mother is um, pictured there with my 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 oldest children. Um, and how how old was your mother there? What is her name? What uh, was her name? Emily Swift Cloud. Emily Swift Cloud. Hotchkiss. Oh, okay. Um, she. Uh, uh, my mother and I. I was raised almost an only child. Um, she, I, unfortunately, when I was born, the church on my reservation, the priest didn't want to baptize me because I was born out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. So because I had the name Swift Cloud, which was her maiden name, and um, so the reservation, uh, Cheyenne River, on that part, that district, they didn't want to support the church. So they oh. boycotted because they felt like I was just a baby and I, I had no no, no idea of making heaven and all this, so I, oh I didn't know. So, but um, the history goes that so the church says priest had to relocate and uh, get get another position. Um, so I kind of felt bad about that that I made a priest leave, but uh, that's the way it was, and um, I accept that. <laughs> but wow. uh, the, the church didn't want me. You know, I always felt like that growing up, so I use this as good ammunition not to go to church with my mother, but she still drug me anyway. So. <laughs> and so. did she live out here for a while? Yeah, she used to come stay with us uh, mm -hmm. through, through the, the my, my tenure out here. You know that she um, she lived she lived with us. So that was, in fact, she died out here in 1998. Ah. And, and she spoke uh, the language. Oh yeah, she spoke the language and she knew the stories. But you know, her thing in that generation always tried to uh, tell us, uh, "Be the best you can be. It's a white man's world, son. Uh, go out and get an education and try to beat the Washichu. That's that's American white in in in, in our language. And be the best you can be and try to try to." Um, uh, beat them at their own game, mm -hmm. and uh, so consequently, I I went to school and went to church and just tried the best to be the best I could be. So, wow! And you've been involved in the community for a long time, I'm very active. Oh yeah, I've always after. See, I'm I'm a re, I'm a, I had problems with booze, like I mentioned, and I um, I quit drinking uh, July second, nineteen seventy one, after. Uh, about a 10 plus year um, bout with uh, con the consumption of too much booze. So admitting that I relenting, relenting that I was a uh, alcoholic and, uh, and facing the reality and try to do something about it to help myself as well as help my people. From that time on, I made a commitment to help, try to help people help themselves. And, uh, and uh, with the problem, even to this day, the problem still exists. Uh, urban, uh, rural, reservation, uh, we have a, a, an extreme problem, a severity of the, of the problem with booze mm -hmm. and other drugs. Nowadays, there's all right, these synthetics true. and uh, from glue sniffers to whatever, you know, it, it's, it's pretty bad. Booze is still the primal, primal uh, you know, chemical we deal with because it's condoned 
biblically and it's condoned socially and it's condoned throughout throughout the world. So uh, it, it, it's quite an uphill struggle. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look at a couple more of the pictures. This is, I guess, from one of the community events. It yeah. looks like probably at St. Philip's Church or someplace, huh? Yeah, we, my wife and I, Sherry, we, we started uh, do, doing a lot of work with St. Phillips. Um, now you put on a, a Thanksgiving dinner, you put on a Christmas party, and the two of you just put on a lot of activities yeah. and for many years, huh? 20 plus years yes. since uh, 1991, I guess we've been involved. Uh, uh, and uh, we, we give a lot of time and effort. Um, I think they're all coming up to shake your hand there in this picture. Um, um, and one of the events. A Halloween uh, and, and other times we had different. Um, ah. Um, and <laughs> now you've been very active in sports over the years and so Billy wanted to put on this run um, dedicated to you, the Hank LeBeau Invitational. So this was last year and it was at where the uh, park, Hellyer Park. <laughs> so let's show a few of these pictures, then we'll talk a little bit about the sports you've been involved in. This was, I think, the ribbon that everybody, all the participants got. There was a nice crowd that came out for that event. Yeah, I was quite impressed. I was so, I was really- There's um, Sherry and Renee in the background there. <laughs> I think Sherry won a ribbon that time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, she. She took first. In there her, we uh, are. 70-plus division. Whatever. <laughs> Looks like a lot of sun there. <laughs> and there's the winner. No. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think they just gave you your numbers. <laughs> Reenacting coming through the finish line. <laughs> yeah, that's for the, for the camera. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sherry and I, we've been involved throughout the years as um, a lot of people would say act activity uh, activists. Uh -huh. I guess we 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 will we've um, um, volunteered and um, uh, to help uh, generally people, human beings, help themselves. Like I mentioned, and uh, we've been involved in many uh, fun spiritual runs through the years. They both uh, ran, huh? Yeah, yeah. We both we were involved in the. 500 spiritual runs since its inception in 19, uh, 1980, 1979, I remember in the early years. And we were always people in the background helping our, 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 our people. Um, our own family was involved and we had them running. They all, to this day, they're all grown up and they tell these stories <laughs> of uh, running through uh, Delano and running through uh, child chilla and sleeping along the highway and um, the funny things that happened to them and we, we have an immensity of stories that uh, I know they they never did say oh we love you guys for it but they just laugh <laughs> at it. I mean, it was a good so, experience yeah, and healthy of course yeah, poor things they were just drunk through it with <laughs> us um, and they were but they they you know we we felt it it, it, it gave them a clear understanding politically and uh, racially and uh, and spiritually uh, who we were and to um, try to help people and that's mm -hmm. what we're put on this this earth is uh, there's givers and takers and my grandfather always said be a giver that's why we're here as who owes you as uh, two legs to help creation you know and uh, and he always said he was a member of the who owes you tribe which means two legs and um, the two-legged helped the four-legged and et cetera, all the way down the line, all the other uh, creators creation. So, and uh, so you, you never have this understanding until you really commit yourself to walk that good road, you know, and uh, to help people walk it too as well. It, it's, it's not about, it's not about material wealth, it's about spiritual wealth mm -hmm. and that's, that's the way I've, kind of taken it since I walked this road and whether it's the Bible or whether it's the Quran or the pipe or the eagle feather, they all have that sacred meaning and they all mean right. It's your heart that that uh, justifies um, who you are and and um, the, your, your um, remarkability as a spirit, spiritual being. 
Do you think um, the Native youth have a more difficult time adjusting now? Um, obviously, they are probably born and raised here, um, but staying in touch with their Native identity, or how do you see that whole scenario? I, I think um, uh, if they were like me, they were totally unaware, you know, and and they kind of go along with the grown-ups. So I think it's our duty as uh, grown-ups to really teach them uh, because we're the ones with the knowledge and we should share that. And now to push them into it is another story. I mean, you don't want to do that. You want them to choose to that you like that traditional way or parts of it. Or, But I've seen too many people say do this and do that mm -hmm. and because um, a lot of children uh, resent that later on when when they grow up. They like, feel like they were forced yeah, into it. Yeah, when you're forced to do something. Um, and, you know, we, we have that from the old boarding schools about mm -hmm. they were forced to go to church. So to this day, uh, certain generations of our Native people really, really, they just totally withdrawn from a lot of, mm -hmm. lot of uh, functioning religions, so. A and some people do both, huh? Yeah, it. You know, I've heard Native uh, old grandfathers speak, and uh, uh, to rise above that and accept uh, uh, both, and mm -hmm. because it's all about God, the Creator, a Maker of everything that is, and uh, how you see it is. It's our personal journeys that's going to get you across to the other side. It's not a religion, or organized religion. It's not a church. Well, the fellowship helps you to be a good human being, but. Uh, it, there's no guarantees, so it's the spirit, the spiritual aspect that connects. I've always been told religions divide and spirituality mm -hmm. connects, so uh, that that told me a lot. This is in seminary now. Th this wasn't uh, uh, through the indigenous people. This is through uh, seminarians mm -hmm. that, that always had that. So to remind right. ourselves that no, no bona fide religion, whether it's Catholic or Presbyterian or Episcopalian as I am, mm -hmm. is gonna is gonna do it. You may put an immensity of money in the uh, to appease your, appease you of your wrongs through the week or the month, but but there's no guarantees. I mean that that's good thinking, but I think it just be a good human being to your fellow man and creation, that's where it's at. Wow. Gee, there's so much more I wanted to ask you. I think we're almost out of time already, again. Um, years ago, I went on that running is my high, and then I learned later on that you had started that run. Yeah, the, yeah you know, that started, I, I started that um, uh, years ago when uh, uh, the great Kurt Flood was the athletic director of the Oakland Recreation Department. He was the head of it. And later on, you know, you, a lot of you probably heard of his story through the documentary on HBO. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, he's got quite a story. And just about that time when, when he was struggling is the time that I look back at our, our lives. And that's the time when, when I went in his office and met him. And I asked him if I could have a run. I didn't realize that he was struggling with um, his, his problems too as well. But he was just kind of uh, coming out of it. and. He, he was really nice. He just said, sure, I could do that. I thought he was going to charge us this huge uh -huh. fee at Oakland Parks and Rec. He said, no. He said, uh, how, how many are you going to have? He said, you know, if you have a lot, I'll have to charge you a lot. I said, no, well, he said, just say 50. <laughs> I said, okay, go ahead, he said. So he was very accommodating. So we got Lake Merritt, the, the, the course, and, and uh, we made our ribbons through the... Um, the program I was with, we made leather ribbons, and uh, that was our first running is my high to uplift our spirits. And uh, at the same time, it's, it's pretty good really physically. really large, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Thousands of people. You know, this year, and they had tents and everything oh else. And I was so impressed. I said, whoa. And of course, they drug me up there to say a few words. And, uh, <laughs> I'm over there going, hama, 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 hama. Well, you're used to having a microphone in oh, your yeah. hand. I always see you with a <laughs> microphone. <laughs> so, but... Um, but uh, it, it, it was quite impressive, and it's still going. I think it, 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 they had a quiet period for one or two years, uh, and, um, and, and they didn't have it, but they brought it up. At, first, it was to battle chemical addiction. That, that was the intent to, 
to do something physical with your body because we were all around these smoke-filled rooms uh, doing the 12-step work at one time, if you remember, since since um, the groups and meetings and smoky-filled rooms with a <laughs> big coffee dispenser to drink and, and um, everybody, you know, but little did we know we were getting chemically addicted to other things and, you know, and um, so I felt, hey, why don't we do something with our body to feel good? You know, mm -hmm. like the sweat lodge does its its job, and why can't we get out there? And if those of you that run or walk know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it gives you a lot of time to to quietly be at peace with yourself, to pray. And it's or, a great high. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Very, very good. Well, so. Thank you so much for being here, Hank. I really oh. appreciate it, and I think we need about three more hours to uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> chapter so we could do your documentary. <laughs> on Data Voice TV, but thanks again for being here, and we'll bring you back, and we want to bring Sherry back, and we have a lot more stories to hear from you, but, and we'll get some more pictures. All right, well, thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Thank you for joining us. Like us on Facebook. Don't forget, we all have pictures of the taping of the show, but tune in to our new time on Sunday nights, and we'll see you next week. We have some pictures to show you on the way out, so take a, stay tuned. Thanks for being here. Bye bye.